All right, so we are continuing on with our blood evidence lesson. In lesson one, we talked about serology and blood typing, and this is lesson two where we're talking about blood spatter and blood stain interpretation. So blood spatter or blood stain interpretation is a technique that seeks to piece together the events that caused bleeding at a crime scene. So it's sort of the physics spin on blood evidence and you need to know that blood stains are not considered individual or class evidence. Uh, in fact, they're not really considered evidence at all. Now, the blood that makes up the blood stain is considered evidence, but the actual blood spatter itself more so tells the story of what took place at the crime scene that particular moment. So blood stains are different than any of the other types of evidence that we've discussed so far in this unit. Fingerprints, DNA, fibers, hairs, all of those serve as evidence that points directly to a suspect or a group of suspects. But blood stains serve as a story, a way for investigators to determine the events that surround that crime scene. So what's going to happen is blood stains or blood spatter is going to be left at a crime scene. Investigators are going to take a look at that, and then they are going to analyze um, those blood stains. And so these analysts can correlate the static blood stains at a crime scene with the dynamic forces that caused those blood stains. So they're going to look at types of blood stains like impact spatter, cast off spatter, transfer stains. They're going to look at the size of the blood stains, the shape of those blood stains to try to recreate the events that took place at that crime scene. This is also a way for investigators to confirm or disprove stories that come from suspects or witnesses. So there's a lot of physics involved. Um, a, it it takes a trained professional to read blood stain patterns. And so we're just going to kind of hit the high points. Right, so again, one of the first things that investigators do when they get to a crime scene and they're working with blood is they're first going to need to verify that that material is indeed blood. And remember, they do that with presumptive blood tests. So are they, they're going to um, use a presumptive blood test to determine that they are indeed working with blood, and then they're going to start to analyze those blood stains. So in the actual spatter analysis, an investigator will determine trajectory of the blood, which is where the blood came from and how it spread over the surface. By measuring the shape of the blood stain on a surface, the direction of movement can be determined as well as the speed that that blood was traveling when it hit a surface. Both of those can be really important to recreating the story behind what happened or what took place at a crime scene. You can see here in these pictures, um, these are some different blood stains and in some future lessons we're going to get into what these stains actually mean but you can have passive stains and then you can have velocity spatter those can be further classified as low velocity spatter meaning that the blood was moving very slowly when it hit the surface or medium velocity spatter which means it was traveling a little bit faster and then your high velocity spatter patterns are going to create these really tiny droplets that spread over a surface Again, we're going to look at that in a, a future lesson, but you can see here in the pictures, different blood shapes and sizes can help recreate the events behind how that blood got on that surface. And a trained investigator is going to want to try to determine how that blood got on the surface, how fast it was moving, what object was used to create that pattern. You need to know that blood falls as spheres. Uh, you can see in the picture there that perfect sphere, um, which is why when we have what's called a passive drop, which means that the blood was uh, drawn downward towards Earth's surface by gravity, because it forms that sphere on the way down, it's going to hit the surface at a 90 degree angle with a circular pattern. And then that pattern is going to have something called spikes and satellites that are going to help sort of tell the story. So drops do form these circles when they hit the surface, and that is basically due to the cohesion properties of blood. 
Now the size of those blood drops depends on how fast it was going when it hit the surface. Again, we talked about that in the last slide. You can have a low velocity spatter, medium velocity spatter, or high velocity spatter. Now, as a general rule, the higher the energy of the impact, the smaller the drops are going to be. So you can see with the example of a gunshot um, spatter pattern, we call this a high energy blood stain or spatter pattern, um, and it's going to produce drops that are less than a millimeter in diameter, so really tiny drops. Then if you have a passive stain, those are going to be larger. Again, gravity pulled down on that drop. It was moving very slowly, fell at a 90 degree angle, and it's going to create more of a circular pattern. And those are going to be a little bit larger. All right, so general rule, the fastest that free falling blood drops can travel is about 25 feet per second. So that is passive drop, falls at the uh, hands of the force of gravity, and the fastest that it can travel when falling um, passively is 25 feet per second. Another rule um, to note is that blood always travels in the direction of the applied force. So I'm going to give you just a second to write this down. You want to put this in your notes. Blood's going to always travel in the direction of the applied force. You learn this in physical science or physics. Um, but I'm going to send you to another video to finish out this lesson because they, they can actually show you in the video some different examples of how um, patterns are created, blood stain patterns are created at crime scenes. So they're going to walk you through passive stains versus velocity spatter. They're also going to walk you through the difference between impact spatter and cast off spatter, transfer stains, and what those look like. So what I want you to do is head over to YouTube. And I want you to search um, Wired, put this out. I want you to search Forensic Expert Explains How to Analyze Blood Stain Patterns. It's a 17 minute video, but it does a really, really good job um, of showing how different patterns are created at a crime scene. So head over there now, watch that 17 minute video, and I will see you in the next lesson.